Such a love is inexhaustible. Oh my God. You know that moment when you, when you, when you, when you enter into a, a, a life, lifelong relationship with God. And God keeps on wowing you in love. Let me say this. The love you have is sufficient for a, la- for a, for a lifetime for many people. You can continue to love and increase and grow in love. Amen. Okay, let me say this now to help some folks. Tell me what my love is inexhaustible. Say my love is inexhaustible. It is foolish for you to say, you know, there's no, you know, I can never love another person. I can love another person. If you know, I really love him. <laughs> You're foolish, amen. You're ignorant. There's, you have enough love. Tell him I got enough love. Got love. Amen. If he left you, you move on to the next. Yes, amen. Exactly. And you know what? God's going to give you an ability to love exactly. even more than what you had before. It's from greater to greater. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, I love. Amen. I keep on loving. Amen. Amen. I just keep on loving. Is it that? That's it. It's inexhaustible. I just love. There's enough love. Tell me what there's enough love to go around. It's inexhaustible. That's what the Bible says when it says, love never fails. It never what? Finishes. It never finishes. Tell me what love never finishes. Love. Amen. Can, can you say this, okay? Can you say this? Can you say this? Can you say this? You know, you know, um, say, 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 say future husband. If you have your own already, you can actually face the person. Praise the Lord. Say future husband. There's enough love for you for a lifetime. You know that moment when some people say, you know, after some years, the relationship will not go sour. You are not serious. You are not in scripture. You are not in scripture. Yes, sir. Say, our love has waxed cold. He no longer loves me the way he used to. Amen. 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 It should get sweeter and sweeter. Yes, I'm not looking at somebody. Yes, Say, I got enough love. Got enough to love. mess you up for a lifetime. Yes, Tap that your neighbor. Say, you better not be the one. Yes, I got enough love. Yes, to mess you up for a lifetime. Yes, that's it. Amen. Enough love. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Enough love to mess you for a lifetime. Praise God. I'm inexhaustible. Praise the Lord. I got stuffs under my sleeves. You think you've seen the best. No, 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 no. I still got stuff. Amen. Out of your belly shall flow. You know, crazy, I- oh my God, I can't wait to enter into it. You know, crazy ideas come to your mind when you're in love. You become creative. Things you never imagined you could do before, suddenly you find yourself doing. Love is like a drug. Oh my God, I just said it. Amen. You know, the Bible says, it says, it says, it says your love is stronger than death. I think that's how it puts it, yeah? Amen. Yeah, that's it. It is. And it's scriptural in the Old Testament. And guess what happens? You know, and guess what happens? It proved itself in the resurrection of Jesus. The power of love, the way people are so scared and almighty death, we must all experience death. Brother, can I shock you? We must all experience love. Amen. Amen. Tap your neighbor, say you'll feel it too. Say you'll experience it too. Say even you too. As well dressed and organized as you are, will be swept off your feet when love comes. I can tell you that for sure. Amen. You won't believe it's you this thing is happening to. You speak in tongues, you shout, you're so organized and corporate today, you just do like these people. Kana people. You will soon get Kana yourself. <laughs> you go get Kana. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't get kind of to be swept off your feet. And some of you would 
If you are the type who is too spiritual or ignorant, you start praying to God, Father, please remove this thing from me. And God is like, remove what? I put it there. Like, Father, remove this feeling. Why am I feeling like this? And God is like, remove what? It's now you are becoming normal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Next one, quickly, because of time. It says, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Tell about love. love goes beyond knowledge. Goes beyond knowledge. You can explain it. You can't reason it. You can't calculate it. It's beyond knowledge. It will humble you. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you see that thing which, ha- which has happened to everybody, has happened to you. You just fall, Yakata. It is so that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, now you may wonder why am I talking about it like this and using people? Because the Bible says if you do not, if you, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you don't love the people you see, how can you love God? Amen. Amen. So it starts first from your ability to understand loving people. Loving people. Go back now to um, where we were. Amen. Praise the Lord. Galatians, the fifth chapter, 22nd verse. So I began to say that there's only one fruit and every other thing you see after that is an explanation. I'll show it to you before we end. The original translators, I believe, they fought it because they did not understand. You know, it's one thing to translate, another thing to understand what you're translating. So you see, the, f- the, f- f- the fruit of the Spirit is love. Then he goes on to say, there should have either a colon or a semicolon. Then it says joy. Tell anybody, love is joyful. Love say jo- love, rejoices. love rejoices. When you love, for some strange reason, you are just happy. Amen. You are like someone who is on drug. Your countenance suddenly changed. It used to be difficult for you to smile. Now you just smile. Amen. You don't care whether the smile fits or not. It just flows. Love is what? I wish we could divide scripture. Um, I mean, divide the screen. I would have loved to be comparing it with another verse with you, but if you look at First Corinthians thirteen, stay on this one. If we, since we can do that, if you look at First Corinthians thirteen, chapter from the fourth verse down. One of the things you see about love, in describing love, which a lot of people know about, and um, which is where she has her song from, uh, Mercy Shinwo, um, the Bible says, love rejoices. It what? So whenever you are in love, you are just happy. Tell anybody you are happy. Yeah. Amen. There are some of you now who think you are happy. Believe me, when the day you, 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 you're in love, huh? you enter new dimensions of happy. You will stop caring how your neighbor thinks. And you just start worshiping. You just start praising. When it's praise time, you that used to be conservative for some strength, you'll be dancing. You can't understand why you're dancing now. The drug is working. Tell anybody the drug is working. <laughs> They can't convince you to praise. They can't convince you to dance. Amen. Amen. But the day she says yes. Amen. Amen. (laughs) You'll be forming your own songs. You've never composed songs, but that day you start composing. Everything starts fitting in. Too much joy. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Joy suddenly comes. 
So the first thing you will notice about love, whenever there is love, is there is joy also. Your heart is, you, you know, you're, you're happy. You're happy. People are asking you, uh, why are you just smiling? Why are you happy today? You are so happy. <laughs> nothing, no. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. They're like, no, there's something you're not telling me. There's something you're not, what are you not telling me? Hallelujah. My, you see, your love for God, your love for yourself, and your love for people would definitely look exactly like this. I'm talking using something you can relate with, but, but, but there are moments you're so joyful because you love God. Not because of some dude. You know you had a nice time this morning with him. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, for the first time, you know, like I prayed for five minutes and then, you know, like it was so beautiful and you're so happy. And another person prayed for one hour and he's not happy. <laughs> I don't understand him. Amen. Because to you, that five minutes was wonderful. Hallelujah. When you, when you love, you have joy. Amen. How many of you, you know that thing when your teacher comes to class and is always angry. You didn't do anything for some strangers. She just gives you bad marks. She puts you in bed. You have not said a word. She's like, are you talking to me? I'm going to report you to the dean. You ask what's going on. They tell you she's still single. Ah, okay. She's single. Or she's going through a divorce. And she'll come with all of that thing and put it on innocent you and mess your day up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She's not joyful. She's not happy. She can't understand why you put, why you put, why you put, why all of you just so happy? Why are you so happy? There's no joy in her life. And that's one of the key things of the kingdom. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. And you know what? The Bible says that's how they're going to know you are my disciple, by your joy, by your love. So, so the love is going to manifest itself as what joy. Tell anybody, I want to see your joy. I want to see your joy. You know, folks, sometimes some believers, the reasons why they don't, they, sometimes they come to church and they don't stay in church, they don't see people in church happy. Even if it is fake one, at least. At least in the club, they see fake one. Bro, you know, um, wine or alcohol is making everybody, you know, happy. Uh, uh, you know, don't, don't play with alcohol, it will make you happy. I'm telling you that. Alcohol will make you happy. It's true. Some guy who normally doesn't talk to you, who normally doesn't smile with you, who doesn't greet you when he's high. Every nice thing. He call you every name. You need to be high on love too. Amen. 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 You need to be high on love. You see some folks who never sing. When they get drunk, they will sing some nice songs. They will compose songs and they don't care how it sounds. Why? They are joyful. And the Bible says love will do exactly the same thing. Tell about love, love will make you joyful. Make you yeah. You know what it says? Next? It says it will keep you at a state of peace. Tell about peace. 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 One of the ways love manifests itself is the peace you have. You are at peace. You feel like you are not at rest. You feel like you finally found it. You feel like, you know, everything is going nicely now. You're not worried. You are not moved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're not worried. And that's why sometimes, sometimes, you know, what folks are looking for, and that's why some people are so crazy about relationships, it's not so much about marriage, it's not so much about sex, it's not so much about many of the other things. They just need to know someone loves them that will keep them in a state of peace. 
That's why someone can tell you, I can wait, so it's not a problem, I can wait. And you're like, you can wait 10 years. You're like, yeah, I can wait. You can wait 10 years. I can wait. And there are folks like that. And you're wondering, but I better go and marry. Leave me alone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because he has reached a place of peace. Love will bring you peace. Love will what? Peace. You no longer worry. And you know the funny thing, or the beautiful thing rather, is when you have joy, huh? when you have peace, calmness, it's not difficult to be patient. Long suffering. I can decide to wait so long as I'm still what? Happy. Are you flowing at all? The reason folks are not patient many times, they are not happy. They are not at peace. When you are, it is impossible to be joyful, to be peaceful, and not be patient. I have all I need right now. Okay? I'm happy. I'm at peace. It's fine. I can wait. So impatience is the result of the absence of these, three, of these two. Now remember, Scripture was written with carefully chosen words of the Spirit. So even the order, the preferences, you know, in which the Holy Spirit is dropping them. One, you know, is it not, is it not, is it not amazing that the Holy Spirit in writing will say, he knows that for some people it's going to be controversial. That for many generations they are going to teach children and teach people things like there are nine fruits of the Spirit. But in his wisdom, he would put the first thing first, love. Because he knows that is the real one. So if you missed the other thing, you shouldn't miss it. For the fruit of the Spirit is love. And this is how it shows itself. It shows itself in joy. It shows itself in peace. It shows itself in long-suffering. Long-suffering means patience. You're patient with folks. Amen? You're patient with folks. So how do you know she's a real Christian or is a real Christian? Check his or her patience level. Tell anybody, you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. Some things take time. Tell anybody, some things take time. Yeah. Some things take time. Never lose your joy. Never what? Never lose your joy, never lose your peace. It will help you to stay patient. There are going to be times when God will not answer your prayers instantly or things what you, that you ask from God may not come Im- immediately. But if you maintain your joy and your peace, you'll find out it's easy for you to wait. There are some things that take time. You may not marry when your mates marry. If you don't lose your joy and your peace in the time of waiting, it will be easy for you to wait as normal as everyone else. Tell me by God, I, I need to keep my peace. I need to keep my joy. Amen. You don't feel, you know, uh, cornered. You don't feel... Um, like you're on the wrong side, on the bad side, you know, and then you start you, you know, falling under pressures and then hooking up with the wrong folks and wrong people because now you are under pressure. You lost your peace, you lost your joy, you're no longer in a state of peace and you're making wrong decisions. You know what Jesus says? He says, by their fruit, you shall know what? You know the tree, not by the leaves or the tree itself. You know the tree by the fruit which, it bring, which is bringing. 
So the true test of a mango tree, you know there are some trees that look exactly the same. Leaves also shrubs. They look exactly the same. It is in the fruits that you're able to tell, oh no. This one is different. It's the fruit that tells the difference. And the fruit God wants us to see and have is, the, is, is love. In its manifold forms. In its odd, it's more than eight, but in this particular verse it speaks of eight. Turn about kindness. That's the next one. The King James translates it here as... Um, um, gentleness, well, it's not gentleness. Gentleness comes after. This particular, the, the Greek word used here is actually kindness. Tell about kindness. kindness. Kindness, kindness. Love is kind. Love is what? You know what kindness is? Kindness is the next one, goodness. Kindness is goodness that you show to someone at a point and a time when the person does not deserve it. You know that moment when someone says, please be kind to me. You know, the person has erred. The person has made a mistake. But still, love, love is kind. Tell anybody, love is kind. How kind are you when folks hurt you? You give it back to them. You shake the whole place. Don't just try me. In fact, at the spark, my head they hot. Today you go not say my head not the house. Where you go? <laughs> Transfer the ignorance. Learn to be kind, please, and it starts from you. How kind are you to yourself? Learn to be what? Learn to be kind to yourself. There are some of you, you've made mistakes, but you, till today you have not forgiven yourself. You punish yourself. You make wrong decisions just to complicate things for yourself. Learn to be kind to yourself. Learn to forgive your very self. There is no person who has not made mistakes in this life. Because what you can't give, what, and, or rather what you don't have, you can't give. The reason some folks are not kind to other people, they are never kind to themselves. I'm telling you the truth. When you see someone who is mistreating you, go and check properly. What that person is doing to his own self is worse. Turn about be kind to yourself kind to yourself. Amen. I thought, I, th I, thought, I thought some time ago on a message titled Selfie, right? If you remember, learning to love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Show yourself some love sometimes. Praise the Lord. Take yourself out. Amen. Amen. There are some of you in this church, I think you don't need that sermon. You, you know the sermon very well. You know how to spoil yourself good. Yes, Amen. Take yourself out sometimes. Your very self. Go out on a date with you. Are you not, are you not worthy enough? Take yourself out. Spoil yourself a little. Get yourself something. Hallelujah. Tell anyone, get yourself something. Get yourself a gift. Surprise yourself and act surprised. <laughs> Amen. Surprise yourself and act surprised. Ah! It's a wristwatch. It's so nice. Oh, thank you. It's so beautiful. Oh. And you know, put it on your Instagram. T tell everybody about it. You know, like you got a special gift. Or, you know, like some anonymous person surprised you with this gift. Let it be. Some admi secret admirer. Someone who is crushing on you. Let it be. Tell them I got a crush on me. Amen. And then, and then, you know, when, when that brother or sister finally shows up, you begin to tell him how that, you know, you know, 
you normally receive gifts. He has to get used to how it's done. So, so, I, you know, I, I get gifts. I love surprises. You know, I always receive surprises every month. You know, so that kind of thing. And you give him your, your CV, tell him about everything. Yes, and he will learn. For how you teach him is what he will become. Yes, Amen. Yes. Spoil yourself a little. Surprise, surprise. Ah! You know, it's your birthday. You're like, ah! You don't, don't wait for people to come to you at 12 o'clock. Surprise yourself. Ah, it's my birthday! <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my God. You won't understand the importance of these things. You know, the Bible says he reached a point in God's life. He found nothing else and nobody else by which to swear, and he swore by himself. There are moments you find nothing or nobody. Nobody wants to celebrate your birthday. Celebrate it for yourself. Celebrate your birthday for yourself. Simple as that. Stop waiting on others. Take the lead. Show them how you'd want to be treated. Take yourself out. Praise the Lord. Tell them to be kind to yourself. You know, what was going to happen is, as you learn to be kind to yourself, it becomes easy to be kind to others. It becomes easy to be kind to others. Amen. The next one is goodness. Goodness, I already said it's, um, well, I differentiated it from um, kindness. But goodness is the ability to just do something good, regardless of whether the person has done something to merit it or not. It's just in your nature. God, the Bible says, it does good to both the good and to the evil. To the evil, it would actually be more of a kindness. That's why you see folks sometimes just cry like, you know, God is so kind, you know. Just so <laughs> I don't know what I've done to deserve it, but he just keeps on blessing me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Goodness. Hallelujah. Tell him surely. Goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah, that's that scripture. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. All of it. Amen. Can I speak to somebody? You don't, you don't have to let folks... You know, there are things you may do in this life that people may not forgive you for. Huh? Forgive yourself. Are you hearing me? Forgive yourself. You deserve it. Hello? You deserve it. You've made mistakes. I mean, everyone has made mistakes. Your own mistake may be different from another person's mistake, but mistakes are mistakes. You made mistakes, so forgive yourself. Be good to yourself. And then the, the next one he says faith. Tell me about faith. Love. One of the one of the one of the manifestations of love is faith. Faith believes easily. Faith what? Faith. Be, uh, love rather believes easily. Love believes easily. Love what? First Corinthians I think puts it like this. He says it believes all things. Love believes all things. When when you love, in fact, when someone tells you anything, you just believe it. You are not even thinking straight. You know that moment when the person tells you, you know, I'm going to buy you an aeroplane, and you're like, oh, yes, I believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, a little child, a little child tells you, daddy, daddy, you know, like, you know, daddy gets him everything, anything he asks. What do you want me to get for you when I'm coming, you know, I'm traveling? He said, buy me an aeroplane. aeroplane. So, so, okay, okay, which one do you want? Black or white one? Ah, uh, I want the two, black and white, you know, like. <laughs> Okay, don't worry, I'll buy three, I'll buy a yellow too for you. It's like, okay, okay, daddy. You know, and he's expecting really. Every time he has an aeroplane, flies fast. Ah, is that my aeroplane? <laughs> she's not 22, she's still waiting for the plane. 
The plane is still coming. But she believed absolutely. Love believes all things. All things. You see, that's a love, love. When there is real love and true love, and I mean real love and true love and perfect love, 